Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. If you are new, welcome. My name is Courtney, here at Maria B, your guide to all things PhD, lifestyle and productivity. And I do videos on all three of these areas, so if you are interested, please hit the subscribe button down below. Today I want to cover the PhD application process, what the procedure is like and how you can successfully submit a PhD application. But before I do that, I want to take this moment to say thank you to all those of you who are already subscribed to my channel. I recently hit 1000 subscribers, which you know is one of the first big achievements as a YouTuber. <laughs> I still don't consider myself a full-blown YouTuber yet, but I'm so grateful for all of you who comment and continuously support my channel and the content that I put out. So thank you so much and I'll try to keep giving you the content that you love. So drop comments down below and tell me what you're interested in seeing. So to jump into today's video, the first thing I want to say about the PhD application process is it varies depending on the pathway that you take. So firstly, I'll break down what are the pathways to PhD application, the PhD application pathways. The first one I want to highlight is when a project is already available and the second one is when you're coming with your own project. So that's two pathways that we have. The first one, when you have a project available, most times a supervisor would put forward a project that they have funding for, they already secured funding. This can be on like a DTP or any doctoral training program, different fellowships, etc. For those ones, what you would need to do is you would apply directly either to the scholarship, and there are a few, inter like there are a few points in between that you have to do differently, but you would apply for that project. And the second one being, you would come with a full application where you have to have your own proposal, etc., and possibly even funding. So we'll get into how you apply for each of those. So the PhD application process, I would say there are five key stages to the PhD application process. A few of these would drop out depending on which pathway you take. But the first pathway that I want to get into is the one where you're coming with your own project. And if you are doing that application process, the first thing is to really know what topic you want to cover. This can be very broad in the beginning because, you know, as you go through the PhD stages, things will change. But having an idea of the topic that you want to cover would set you up for identifying your next step, which is your supervisors. But within that first step, what I want to say that you can do is read around a bit, find the topics that you're interested in, do a Google search list to different lectures or guest speakers talking about your area and think about and identify what is something that you're interested in. The next step, step two of that process would then be identifying and contacting potential supervisors. Choosing a supervisor is one of the most critical parts of your PhD application. This person is going to be your guide. It's possibly going to be the longest relationship you've ever had because it's going to be three to five years with this one person and this person is going to be very close to you in the end, whether it be you like them or you hate them. So it's really important that you choose somebody that you think you can work well with so you will like them. So how might you go about identifying a supervisor? One thing you can do is re when you're reading these literature and doing your research, Look at the different names that keep occurring, um, the key people who are in these fields, top people in these fields, and then you can get an idea of what universities they're at, what institutions, etc. But also, depending on the field that you are in, there are some universities that are at top of the ranking charts for different fields. You can then just look at different universities and identify supervisors. But my advice to you really is, it's key to find the person first and then have the university as second because there are always going to be great supervisors listed across different institutions. When the institution really matters is when it comes to um, facilities, if you're in labs and so forth, the access that you can get. So look for supervisors and then look for the institutions that they're affiliated with because the supervisors have their expertise and they can move wherever they want to. Another useful tip is to use social media. A lot of academics are now on Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. Type in the different fields that you're interested in, see who are buzzing in different areas and connect with them and follow them, read upon their research, see if what they're doing matches what you're interested in. If it is so, then your next step is to contact them. To contact your supervisor, what you should do is send a formal email introducing yourself, um, suggesting to them that you are interested in undertaking research with them. If you do at this point have a research proposal, you can share it with them or you can make 
a suggestion that you can share it with them if they are interested and then you try to schedule a meeting with them now we're in the age of online meeting which is quite convenient so you can always set up a zoom meeting if they are interested in being a supervisor they will tell you either upfront they have too many candidates they don't have the time and you can save yourself some time and some hope in that process but identifying a supervisor and contacting them is very critical for your PhD application. So the next step is identifying your entry requirements. So once you've decided who your potential supervisors can be and you know which institutions they're at, they might guide you and tell you, okay, well, the entry requirements are this or that. Um, they may have special arrangements depending on certain students, but look at the entry requirements for the universities or even that research group that you're trying to get into. Once you've done that, make sure that it matches with what you have. You can discuss this with the supervisor as well as you go along. For some universities, they require you to apply and then they match you to a supervisor. So bear this in mind that sometimes you might have to apply for the program um, and then you can get paired with a supervisor. So just keep that in mind to know that some of these processes are interchangeable. The next thing that I would say if you are applying for your own project and not applying to a specific project is try to identify opportunities for funding. I'm an international student, so although I was applying for different projects, I wasn't eligible for UK funding. So identify source of funding. These could be university funding, for example, at Imperial. For all students, there's a president scholarship, which requires you to be a top performer. For international students, it's the Commonwealth Scholarship. So look around whether there's in your university, other institutions, or within your research group that you can get any funding for. And one tip that I have is if you contact your supervisor early enough, your potential supervisor early enough, there may be a chance that they can help you develop that project and then put it forward for funding. So once you've done all of those things, you've decided your topic, you look for supervisors, you have a potential list of supervisors, entry requirements and the universities, the next step is to apply and keep your fingers crossed and in the next video I'll give you some tips on how you can ace your interviews and progress your application process. For the other pathway that I mentioned, which is you're applying to a project, you have one less stage to really deal with, which is developing the concept yourself. Generally for this track, the supervisors would already provide a brief outline and understanding of the project, the background, problem statement, and a few questions they want answered. So somewhere that you can find these projects are normally on like findaphd.com or on the different department websites for different universities. I'll link some of these down below in the description bar if you're interested. But overall, once you've identified that project, the next step is to check if you're eligible for these projects, whether you're an international student or not. Even if you aren't eligible, it's sometimes still worthwhile to contact the supervisor because they would tell you if there are different options. For example, I am an international student, and although I applied for one of these projects, I was not able to get the not funding but I was able to bring my own funding for the project so still explore the opportunity and go on to the next step which is contacting the supervisor. So for this project track although you don't have to do a lot of the groundwork in terms of getting the project together and what the question is you still need to take time to read around the project and identify what exactly the project is asking do a bit of background reading so that when you contact the supervisor you can come to them and be like, look, this is what I can bring to the project. You know, I have a few questions about how you want this to be done. And that way they can really see that you're interested in the project and have some understanding of what they want. And I think that is really important because you also have to establish, is this the project for me? And is there an opportunity for me to shape this project in a certain way with this supervisor? As I mentioned, after this point, the steps are pretty much the same, which is you contact your supervisor, you get in touch with them, you know, understand what they want, you discuss any, any questions that you have. And the next step is applying through the university or to, through the research group, and then your application is submitted. For this pathway, funding normally is already assigned for the project, but if you are like me with international, need for identifying funding is still very relevant. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it was useful to you. If you are applying for a PhD in the coming days, weeks, and months, I wish you the very best. Um, if you have any questions, please drop them down below in the comments section and I'll be sure to answer. If not, but down below, you can always head over to Instagram where I also share these tips and I'll be sure to provide any help that I can. I'll also try my best to give more videos on this topic. If you are interested in that, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when they are released. And if you have any other ideas and topics that you would like me to cover, 
please put them in the comment section down below. I appreciate that. So all the best to you and your application and any journey that you're on. So until next time, stay great and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.